Hello, let's continue our Sudoku adventure with Houston, We Have a Problem by GDC. So this puzzle has doublers in it. We did have a doubler theme week several months ago. So if you remember it from there, um, hopefully that, that will help. But we do have a lot of newer people to the series who may not have done doubler week. So I'm going to carefully go over the rules. But I am told this is a relatively simple introduction to doublers, which should be nice. Um, doublers are a really neat concept, but just explaining them takes longer, so I apologize for that, but we're, we'll try to go over this carefully so that you understand. Um, so anyway, we do have normal 6x6 six six Sudoku rules, which means in every row, every column, and every 2x3 box, we are placing the digits 1 to 6 exactly once each. We also have arrows in the grid, but they are going to be modified by doublers, but let's talk about the arrows first. So there's arrows with a circle attached. The values on the arrows, and I'm specifically using value in this case instead of digit, the value on the arrows, when you sum them up, are going to sum to the value in the circle. So I'm going to give an example ignoring doublers here. In fact, there is no example where I can ignore doublers. Um, so we're going to go over doublers then. But one example would be um, if, if this was one, I don't know, I can't even give an example without giving away logic here. So let's not do that. But you take the, the, the values on the arrow, you add them all up, and you get the, the value in the circle. And you may be looking at these going, something must be wrong. And that's because we have doublers. So there are six doublers in the grid, but they're hiding. There's going to be one in every row, one in every column, and one in every box. So it's kind of like a, an extra digity thing. And um, we're going we're gonna to be using a green. We're just going to color green wherever there is a doubler. And when we do that, we're going to color the row column box gray. I will use a light gray to say not doubler. Um, I recommend doing something similar to that as well. You can also use the pen tool and put a circle or something wherever a doubler is. But I'm just going to color. So let's say let's say this uh, let's say this cell ends up a doubler. What that means is that the value of the cell is double the digit in it. So if I were to put a six here. That would then have a value of 12. And that would mean that these th four cells add to 12. Let's say none of them were doublers. Then we could add to 12 by going, say, uh, 1, 2, 3, 6. That doesn't work there. How about that? 1, 2, 3, 6. So we notice uh, because none of these are doublers, we don't need to worry about doubling them. But we end up with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6, which does add to 12, which matches the doubled 6 here, which is 12. All right. Now, if we had, say, this as a 5, oh, this, this can't be the, OK, so let's swap the 1 and the 5. We could also do this. We could say 2, this has a value of 2 because it's doubled, plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 is 12. And that matches the doubled 6 here, which is 12 also. So there's your examples. There's going to be six doublers in the grid, one in every row, column, and box. In addition to that, each digit from 1 to 6 is only doubled once. So as soon as I double the, say, double the 6 here, none of the other 6s in the grid can be doubled. The other 5 doublers are doubling 1 through 5. All right. So that's it. Th th that's the rules. Hopefully those examples help you. Uh, there is a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, or you can use the tracking sheet. Um, and I'm going to get started right now. OK, well, there's a 6 on this arrow. If we don't double the sum, then we're going to have a lot of trouble reaching it. So we're going to double this sum. Now, even th that means this isn't doubled either, because if this was doubled, well, first of all, I mean, this is a doubler, so the, the entire row column box isn't doubled. But also, we can't double the 6, or it would still be too big, right? So we're going to be doing 6 plus something, but we're going to have to add an even number to the 6, because the doubled number is always even. And we need to stay even. 6 is already even. Stay even with a 2 or a 4. So that means we add to 8 or 10, which means this has to be a 4 or a 5. All right, this also better be doubled, because if we take four different digits and we add them together, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is the smallest that could be. That's still 10. So that means this has to be doubled, and it's a 5 or a 6, adding to 10 or, or uh, 12. Um, now, we don't know necessarily that. Well, actually, we do know. Oh, interesting. So this cannot be a doubler. We can take the entire row column box and gray it. Um, and this can't, uh, th this can't be the doubler. So there is actually a doubler somewhere on the sum as well. So uh, we cannot actually achieve the minimum sum of 10 because 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, even if we double the 1, we end up with 11. So this does add to 12. So we have our 6 doubler here. 
Um, I'm not going to think too much about how this adds to 12 yet, because, uh, let's see, are we only doubling the 1 to get to 12? I don't know, let's not think about that yet, because there is a lot more lo low-hanging fruit here. Um, I'm going to need a doubler on this arrow, because I can't put the same digit in both of these cells, so this needs to be the bigger one. Uh, no, this needs to be the doubled one. Sorry, this one needs to be doubled, right? Because we need to double this in order to get this digit, which is not doubled. And then also we know that this 1 is a doubler. We could have done this right from the start, because we can't add to 1. So this needs to be 1 plus 1, non-doubled. And when we get our final doublers like this, this is the last doubler for that box, which then makes this the last doubler here. So we located all the doublers. I'm just going to put that we know just from, from off the bat, 1 and 6 are used. So we know these are from 2, 3, 4, 5. And we can narrow that down further. So for example, here, we can't double the 5 to make a, non, a 10. We can't double a 4 to make an 8. So we're either doubling 2 to get 4 or doubling 3 to get 6. Um, here, what's going to be too big? We're going to have to think about this now. Um, so these could be 1, 2, 3, adding to 6, which means that the value of this cannot exceed 6 itself. So it can't be 4 or 5. So we could, but if we did 1, 2, 3, <laughs> look, that's actually no good. Um, hold on, what are we, how are we doing this then? I think we're going to have to do 1, 2, 4, because uh, look, if we did 1, 2, 3, that's too many 1, 2, 3s in this box. So, it, but if I increase this to 1, 2, 4, hold on, this needs to be, these need to add to an even number, actually. Yeah, we can do the same trick. Well, let's do this math trick here. So this is doubled, so it's even, and this is doubled, so it's even. It's 12, which is even. So if this is an even number, then these need to add to an even number to preserve the evenness to make it 12. So we can't make these add to 6, because then this would need to be a 3, and we'd, we'd already be using the 3 to add to 6. So can we add to 8 then? If we add to 8, to get to 12 we need to be 4. So this is going to be a 2 no matter what, and these are going to add to 8 without a 2, so they have to be 1, 3, 4, and we can place the 1. Alright, that 3, 4 pair looks down. Now the 2 is also placed in our doubler, so these can't be 2 anymore, and that places our 5 and our 3. 3 doubled is 6. And we have all the values for our doublers. Perfect. And um, mm, let's see. Oh, this 5 does make... Wait, did I, did I mess that up? I did not. Just placing the 5 does cause this to be a 4, which means this has to be a 2. 3 and 4. So now we have all the values for our arrows, all the values for our doublers. So it should just be just doing Sudoku scanning from here. Um, so we can finish this up. So this is a 5, 6. We need the 6 here. And this is a 5. Um, over here, I need a 3 and a 1. This 1 tells me that's 3 and 1. And that's our 5. Um, I do need a 1 in this box. Uh, 3 doubled is 6. I don't know how that I didn't fill that. Maybe I filled it and undid stuff. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Um, 3 and 6. We need a 3 up here. That's that's here. Um, this 4 looks down. Let's see. Ah, we do have we have two 5s looking in this box, so that's a 5. This 4 looks down. Placing 4 here. This is 2. I need the 2 down here. These need to be 4 and 5. We know the order. Here we need a 5 down here. Uh, it's not placed yet. Hold on, there's probably something easier. Yeah, these two columns are done. So we have 1, 2, 3, we need a 4. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we need a 6. Here we need 2 and 3, not resolved. This is resolved, though, as a 2, which resolves our 3 and 2. Now I need a 3, 5 down here, that's 5, 3. And I need a 4, 6 up here, uh, that's 6, 4. And we're done. And we ended with a 3 in the corner as well. Nice. Uh, that was a really neat uh, doubler uh, puzzle, do you see? I enjoyed that. Um, we used basically two tricks, right? We used uh, the circle's too small, so we got to double it. <laughs> it's pretty, not, not much of a trick, but it is. Uh, and then also the, the, the circle's going to be even, so the arrow needs to add to an even number. And that really helped us think about this more easily. You could have case checked it probably and discovered that this was the only way it worked. The one three four with a two double two, but I think doing the math uh, made it a lot more clear and and less prone to mistake. So I really like using that. So hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, then why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.